watching The David Robinson Show on the Coyote Man Show Network. Real talk, real people, real conversation. community to make a positive difference. Tonight guests I have on my show this evening I'm really excited about. I have Miss Washington here, uh, Mr. Diggs, and Brandon here, who is a part of an organization called Young Successful Leaders. And before I start with the leader himself, I'm going to start with the supporting cast that's actually supporting this young man and He's making some major, major difference in the community. I'm going to start with Miss Washington. Miss Washington, this evening, I want you to tell my guests a little bit about who you are and what y'all are doing, a little bit about the organization and about a little bit about what you're doing as the uh, president of the Neighborhood Associations, which I'm very much familiar with, but tonight is about you. It's about the organization. So I'm going to start with you. I thank you, Mr. Robinson, and yes. we appreciate you for having us here this evening. My name is Monique Washington. I am, I have many titles. I am <laughs> Young Successful Leaders Executive Secretary. I am the president for the Emerson Village Community Association, and I am the vice president for the Southwest Neighborhoods Community Development Corporation. Wow. So I became the president in 2007. It's not an easy job at all. Um, I became very passionate and about doing things in the community and getting them done. Mm -hmm. I'm genuine about helping people. Um, a lot of people do it for recognition. That's not what I'm doing this for. I do it because I care. I want to see our communities uplifted, especially in the black communities. So someone has to step out front and, and speak for everyone, and that's what my passion is. So what inspired you to actually um, take that step um, when you see the challenges and when you see all the different things that are going on in the community, and a lot of time people are quick to say, um, I want to do something, but nobody want to get their hand dirty. So what inspired you to do that? Seeing how, as this was my first home in the Emerson Village Community Association, um, I saw some things that were disturbing for me as a homeowner, mm -hmm. and I felt that I had to speak out against it. Um, I didn't want to see the little drug dealers hanging on the corner, especially in front of my house, especially near school. So I reached out to the city and asked, you know, where's the association in this area? And the president then came to my home, and within a year, it was more or less thrown in my lap. You know, wow. I started the newsletter. I started informing people that there was an association, that people need to understand you can't keep sitting behind your curtain and acting like you don't see anything. You have to come out and, and make your voice heard. That's how our communities will change for the better. So the start was, one, being a homeowner. Yes. And then you took that next step was to say, well, let me get others involved. So y'all was able to form a quorum. Yes. And you was able to bring people together. Yes. And then you had a, a board. Yes. And yes. then... From there, then you had an organization. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yes. It, so. it wasn't an easy task because, like I said, a lot of people have gotten comfortable with that mentality of it doesn't concern me, when in fact it does. You know, I've explained to them when you see young men standing on a corner, you know, you might see five today doing things that they have no business doing, you need to call that in. Because where it might be five today, you got you have ten next week, and it creates a problem for the community. You know, our kids got to walk through these communities. They have to play in the community. And when you just sit back and you get that relaxed feeling, we have the problems that we have now. So my goal is to change all of that. Yes, I am very outspoken. Many don't like it, but it is what it is. Somebody has to step up to the plate for our communities and say enough is enough. 
Well, I definitely, definitely appreciate that. And I definitely understand you. Um, also myself as president of my neighborhood association okay. and have been for some years. So yes. I can understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also now I have Mr. Diggs here. I want you to explain your role uh, when it comes to young successful leaders and your role as when it comes to Mr. Washington and what you do, Ms. Washington, in the community. Well, I mean, I've been doing community work for oh, the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the community is just my life and bread. And, you know, I, I, it's important for me because I look at the community as a thing, a living, breathing type of organization, mm -hmm. a living, breathing type of entity. Whereas though the people are alive, the streets are alive, the trees are alive, like everything gives life within the walls of our community. Okay. Um, so when I take that look and that introspect, I put that into you know, effect and I met people like Miss Washington and people like Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, and Brandon came to me actually at, at the end of one of my meetings, you know, a couple of years back, and he told me he was trying to do so many different things in the community, but he wasn't having a lot of success as a young man. He's 19 years old. A lot of people wasn't giving him their ear. Um, so I told him, I said, well, hey, you know, they're not giving you your ear. And I said, well, it has to do with, you know, finance. I said, because, you know, nobody really trying to put up no money for nothing. Right. So he was just like, well, I just need help. And I said, okay, well, look. I don't believe in giving out money for free, so that's not what I do. <laughs> I said, I said, but I can, I, I can give you something that's more, that's worth more than money. Right. And he was like, "What's that?" I was like, "Knowledge." I said, because once you obtain the knowledge, you're not going to be the person saying, "Okay, we're going to be at, we need a seat at the table." No, you don't need a seat at the table. You're going to make your own table, and they're going to come sit at your table. You mm. know, and that's going to be his YSL table as well as other tables that he'll create for other young people as he moves forward. Um, but that's my whole premise. Um, I've been association president for the community, uh, president of the Southwest Neighborhood CDC Okay. that, that she spoke about. Um, we, we have a few other things that we do in the community also as far as trying to uh, help the young people grow. Uh, but for us, I mean, it's, it's really just about us giving back and – I, I actually was driving on a bus one time when I was riding, and when I was riding, I just looked at so many things that was going on in the streets, and it was just, I just noticed that, you know, young girls was on the street, young men were selling drugs, all kinds of stuff was going on, and I'm on a bus seeing this. Right. Mm -hmm. So as I'm driving past looking at it, I just came up with my mind, and was just like, hey, you know what, we got to have a change. You know, and that's when I really got into work and started doing things with the community. Well, that's great. I mean, I'm really excited about you and Miss Washington there, um, both being presidents, both are just not just taking the role because a lot of it's volunteer work. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't get and paid people for don't that. Want, and people don't <laughs> understand you're constantly giving that's right. and you're putting your sweat because you want to make a difference. And Correct. the key is it takes one person Correct. to start. Correct. And, and then when you can get the ball rolling, it does make a difference. Yes, you don't have to allow people or certain things in our community if you don't allow it. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's only, you know, it's two type of people. It's mm -hmm. people that talk mm -hmm. and it's people that make things happen. Exactly. Correct. So I can appreciate you both. So my next person that I want to talk to, <laughs> is, I'm really, really excited for, because you're talking about the millennium, the millenniums and we're talking about our future. Yes. Here's a young man um, whose uh, his name is Branding. Um, very young, much younger than all of us. All of us. Yes. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited because you're, you're taking a role to say, well, hey, I want to make a difference in my community. I see the things that are going on. Even though I'm young, I can be a part of it and go with the flow. Or I can go against the grain and do something different. Right. Um, young, successful leaders. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, what made you decide? Well, what, what did the name come up? One. And two, what really inspired you to want to do something different in the community and being at your age? 
appreciate it. First, I just want to announce thanks for having me. I definitely want to shout out my support system to the right of me as well. I appreciate them. Uh, You're welcome. Give a lot of credit. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> just to tap into answering your first question, though, um, where did the name come from? Uh, for me, it was just, I actually was in college. Um, I was at Coppin State back mm-hmm. in uh, 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, the, our professor assigned us an assignment to do, right? Think about a program that you would start, right? For me, I was like, I don't know what program I'm going to want to start, you know, but I do want to make a change here in Baltimore, especially growing up here. You know, the first thing we know is when people hear Baltimore, right, they hear violence. Right. Mm-hmm. They don't hear positivity, like businesses making successful, these young people that are, can become young entrepreneurs. So things like that, just like, I was like, okay, we do have positivity here. We can make a change here. Baltimore can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, you know, I sat on it for a couple of hours. I was thinking, like, what, what can I name this program? And then Young Successful Leaders came to me. That same night, I wrote it down. Uh, I turned to my essay. I still had an essay saved as a document file forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when people are like, you guys ask me, like, what did his name come from? It's, it's in the essay. Now mm-hmm. Successful Leaders is going to be the name of this program. Um, but the next steps for me was bigger, was like, like taking the next steps to really, how do I get this started? Right. You know, and that's when, like, Mr. Diggs, I came to him. You know, I was like, but it also it took initiative. First steps for me was like being able to, like, I want to go do this. Like, making sure that I want to go do this, you know. Um, and then I took it to Mr. Diggs, uh, met him. Um, it's funny because nobody was actually at his meeting that night. You know, I stayed. I still came. I was like, I want to talk to him. Because right. at the time, I was a part of the Baltimore City Youth Commission. And one of our goals was to go around the community and talk about, you know, to help how to see how we can better the residents, how we can help better the youth, um, help better our community. So meeting him um, got me to the next steps. We sat. We talked for hours. Uh, we kept meeting. He'll tell you, I never missed a meeting. I was on time. Um, <laughs> just kept going at it. We meet in the cafe. He said, Brian, where you at? You got your notebook? You got your pad? You ready? I said, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Um, and in 2020, we made, we established YSL. Young Successful Leaders May 2020. And so what do y'all meet at? Um, was the, the organization itself meet? Yeah. And um, how many young folks besides yourself that you have came on board and, uh-huh. uh, and are coming out? Yeah, so we meet right now at Edge Woodlands Recreation Center, which is right in the community, Emerson Village. Mm-hmm. Um, and about we had we just did a, a cohort, so we just ran a cohort with about 15 young people that are middle and high school students. Uh, we ran that cohort entrepreneurship from August 25th to December the 1st. Um, and a lot of our entrepreneurs, like, they really learned more about business. Right. You know, one of the things for me coming up and living in the Emerson Village and also just growing up in Baltimore overall is that our young people are not really educated. Mm-hmm. So that was one focus that I was like, okay, and then it's entrepreneurship. We don't really learn entrepreneurship when we're in middle school or high school. So, like, this is something I want to teach. And that's another way of how I looked at my our pillars as an organization. What are, is not really being taught in school that we can go out and teach and help get these businesses actually started. And a lot of our young people are inspired to go out and start these businesses. They want to bake cakes. They want to start cookies. They're really inspired. They're really happy. So I want to so, make it happy for them. What we're going to do, okay. we're, we're going to take a few minutes break here. Okay. And when I come back, we're going to... Um, you know, continue um, on with um, young successful leaders. Okay. And before we break here, I want you to tell the guess how exactly how old are you? I'm 23. 23 years old. 23. And and got a sound mind. <laughs> uh, you know, a mind once uh, that's a, that's a hard thing, man. But when it well, when it's lock and loaded, can't nothing stop you. Can't stop. So we're gonna take a break right here. Then we're gonna come back with success what's the name of the show young successful leaders young successful leaders <laughs> we must secure our families kfg life insurance specialist is a company that partnered with 15 of the top life insurance companies to ensure you get the best pricing knowledge and products to suit your family needs some people believe that term insurance is better than whole life insurance while others feel the complete opposite Some may feel like universal life is the way to go, and others may feel it's better to have a whole life policy. The truth is, neither of the products are better. One just may be more suitable for your family. Our life insurance specialists are not biased, as they are partnered with several life insurance companies. This ensures our clients get the best pricing education and products that are suitable for their families. Let KFG Life Insurance Specialist make these decisions easier for you and your family. Our office is located at Security Square Mall, next to Burlington, in the Coyote Man Show Network. Please call to make an appointment at 443-400-5224 or go to www.lifeinsurancespecialist.org. That's www.lifeinsurancespecialist.org. Let KFG Life Insurance Specialist help you prepare your family in the present because the future is not promised. Act now.
watching The David Robinson Show on the Coyote Man Show Network. Real talk, real people, real conversation. And welcome back to The David Robinson Show. Real talk, real people, real conversations. Positive people doing positive things and making positive things happen in the community. And back to Mr. Brandon here, sir. Um, a little bit more about successful young leaders that are making some things happen at which you've taken that next step. Um, can you have information if someone wants to get in, be involved, wants to get involved, um, maybe want to donate? Can you tell them how to get in touch with you? Yeah, for sure. So if you want, to, if they want to donate or learn more about the organization, they can go to youngsuccessfulleaders.com uh, and just click on the tab. We have a donation tab on there. We also have an opportunity where they can fill out registry as well. Okay, you, you, you want to tell more about this? Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> uh, so this right here is, is goes over our core initiatives. So it talks about our entrepreneurship youth fund, our YSL Academy, which goes into leadership and the workforce development, and then we also have our Band First Me Youth Development Program. Man, I'm real excited mm -hmm. to hear about this. You know, um, a little bit more about the business aspect. You mm -hmm. know, um, you, you're teaching on them to be successful leaders. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we talk about a lot of the negative things that are going here um, in Baltimore. Right. But tonight, yeah, yeah. you know, we have an organization and we have some real people that's doing positive yeah. things in the hardcore of Baltimore City. So I'm really excited about um, what y'all are doing. Um, a little bit more about you mm -hmm. and who is your, you said this is your support team. Yeah. I heard her say she was your, what is this? Executive <laughs> secretary. Executive <laughs> secretary <laughs> yep. at 23 years old. 23 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Make it, and, and Mr. and Mr. Diggs, and what are you to Mr. Um, Brandon here? Well, Brandon, I'm the president of uh, young successful leaders and Brandon. Okay. Brandon's the executive director. So okay, you know. it just man, I'm 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 pumped. <laughs> I'm pumped. <laughs> and and how often do y'all meet? How often do y'all meet now? So we look to at least meet like twice a month right now. Especially you know like we're going, what's been going on with the pandemic. So trying to be safe. Um, mm -hmm. But we definitely want to you know once things kind of calm down some more, we definitely want to be more engaging. Yeah. Uh, no, I was gonna say one of the things is like we usually try to meet um, the, each cohort is about three months. Mm -hmm. So when we do the cohort, we might have at least 15 to 20 youth in it, might have at least three cohorts running at a time. So that's about 60 youth at once that we'll do um, every three months. And then what we do is we just turn around and we bring in another 60 kids. So can you break that down cohort? Can you break down what that consists of? Yeah, well, the cohort, it, you know, it's broken down into like a various different things. So we looked at business and what we thought some of the core things you needed to know about them doing their paperwork, about them having the proper marketing, about them actually setting up and learning the actual vocabulary for the words, um, learning how to speak correctly about each word know the definitions and them really understanding about the core basis of business and once we go through that first introductory then we roll into them starting to learn about you know um, how you apply financing to it um, oh, wow. because a lot of them we look at business from a, a different standpoint whereas though business is kind of like done you can be an entrepreneur or you can be a household entrepreneur mm -hmm. you know those are two different things a household entrepreneur is somebody who wants to have, they don't want to have a business, but they're going to run their household just like a business. Gotcha. They're going to have their own financial report. They're going to pay their own bills. They're going to have a structure set up for the family. In business, you do training. Right. Well, in the family, you're going to have family mentor meetings to make sure you're leading the family in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're going to take those same introspects towards the household. Now, business-wise, as an entrepreneur, that's different. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to actually prepare them and teach them everything. So we're going to teach them SWAS reports. We're going to teach them business plans. We're going to teach them how to break down different analysis. They're going to end up having their own financial statement. Like, they're literally going to break down everything. So when they step out onto that platform and run that business, they're going to be good. And we also are going to be a leg for them to stand on as they move forward. Because the one thing that Mr. Clayton didn't tell you, he has 
a strong goal. So our goal is by the year 2030 to open up a thousand micro youth entrepreneurship businesses. Wow. By the year Big vision. Correct. Big vision. So that's about a, a, almost between 100 and 111 businesses a month. So let me ask you something. Y'all, I see that you cater and you, and what is that age range when you say youth, you know, when you're trying to reach? Um, well, we started, age. you know, our youth organization starts from, we have two different core uh, groups we look at. We got the 10 to 18 model, and then we also have that 18 to 25 model. Wow. You so know, you get the young adults as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, well, and it's, it's funny that you said that because we look at young adults, and Mr. Clayton had brought it to my attention, that people keep saying like when you're 16 and 17 and 18 that they're young adults. No, they're teenagers. Uh -huh. They're not young adults. They're teenagers. Right. A young adult is 18 to 25 because you're an adult, but you're young. Gotcha. You know, so that's how we look at that. And that's how we bring all of the youth into that whole introspection picture. Um, but we also look at it from the standpoint of Mr. Caton had came up with some great ideas on how we should actually be the organization that's leading the youth forward. And that's where he comes in for all of that. So, Mr. Clayton, getting back to you, and yes. I'll come back to you, Ms. Washington. Now that you have got the foundation mm -hmm. and the organization of running, yep. um, yourself as being one person yourself that's mm -hmm. successful, mm -hmm. um, have you have any, where are you standing as for some of the other ones, people that you may have in your group? Um, I know COVID has been a battle, but um, right now, how many people do you have involved um, in your organization right now? So it's about it's just about three of us. Okay, plus me myself. Yeah, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, vision, yeah. the vision is yeah. is big. You well, know, and, 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 and <coughs> I got to correct them on that one too. Uh -huh. We got three people, but we actually have uh, four. Full time volunteers. Okay. Look, What's look. It? So look, they volunteer. Look, they putting in that work, bro. It's like, yeah. Oh yeah. I don't, don't want to leave them out. <laughs> so you got volunteers yeah. already. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so it's about yeah. seven of us all together. Mm -hmm. You know, three of us in the executive level that we trying to get it done, but we got full full time people that we trying to bring on board. Um, but we just got to raise that capital to get them there. Well, I believe that this is a start. Yeah. Um, you actually have um, having the the platform to mm -hmm. talk about. Um, young successful leaders, mm. um, anyone that's watching the show, um, we have it goes out to millions. You never just know. It only just take one. Right. Right. Yep. One makes a difference. Yes. Right. But sometimes we got to put ourselves out there. Uh, here's a platform that we talk about real things and right. people doing real things in the community, which you are. Absolutely. And you know, we hear about the negative things that are going on across Maryland and across the world. But tonight, we want to talk about positive things. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe what you speak into the atmosphere makes a difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so tonight, you know, I'm really excited about having Ms. Washington as well as Mr. Diggs mm -hmm. and Mr. Brandon here. And and Ms. Washington, um, as you being the executive and president as well as Mr. Washington here, Mr. Diggs, Diggs <laughs> what um, things have you focused on that you have seen that has made a difference since um, Mr. Brandon has came on board? Well, you know, I, I'm a, I came on board because Mr. Diggs asked me, and they know my organizational skills and how strong I am with what I do. When Brandon did his presentation, I was really excited about it because I've always felt that our kids are more – than basketball and football players. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to tap. Each person that comes to earth has a gift, and they need that, that person or those persons to tap into that gift and make it flourish. Mm -hmm. So that was why I came on as the executive secretary. You know, I, I believe in what Mr. Brandon is doing. I'm very proud of him. Um, I do see a future for young successful leaders as being something really big in Baltimore and hopefully other cities because that's how it gets started. Um, our kids deserve more. And when they see that you have those people or those, pe those persons that will support them and push them in that positive way and tap into that gift, oh, our kids are awesome. 
Wow. I just want to say to you that <laughs> you were in the right place mm -hmm. at the right time. Absolutely. You know, after the show, um, I do have some information I want to share with you as far as your organization. Okay. Um, that's going to make a difference. You know, everything happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I definitely want to thank you all for being definitely on my show thank this you. evening. Appreciate we appreciate you. you. Really appreciate excited. You. Thank you. And I'm um, looking forward to being a part and thank working you. with you guys. Yes. Well, I yes. got to do one last thing. Just all right. As you know, why sell sign out. <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time for my guests. All right. Well, why sell sign out. <laughs> so can you explain to me what that exactly means? So you know how you check in, right? You got to check out. So that's the sign out. Every video we do, we sign out. Sign okay. Out. I like that. All right. Well, thank y'all once again Absolutely. for watching the David Robinson Show. Real talk, real people, real conversations. You're watching the David Robinson Show on the Coyote Man Show Network. Real talk, real people, real conversation. Watching the David Robinson Show on the Coyote.